there are many things in life that you use in the operating room that are like high-speed internet, orgasms, and financial independence. Once you experience it, you can never go back. And I'm talking about a ureteroscope that I used recently in the operating room numerous times that I just can't go back to reusable scopes once I use this. So I'm going to talk to you about a case that I ha I did recently. It was a patient with a ureteral stone, and the patient had a nephrostomy tube placed by the ER, came into the office, and I'm dealing with the stone. So I took her to the operating room and took care of the ureteral stone. In addition, she also had a stone in the right kidney that I had to go after. So she had a nephrostomy tube in place. She also has this the right lower pole stone, that is in a very difficult spot to access. Not only is it in the lower pole, it's kind of like in the side calyx of the lower pole. If you can just imagine having to angulate your hand and just kind of turn the tip of the scope and turn your your wrist just so you can get to the the side calyx of the lower pole. So now, not, not only are you in the lower pole, you're in the side calyx. Anyway, let me show you the video of how I'm trying to get to this stone. This is a seven millimeter stone in the lower pole, of the right kidney in the side calyx. So let me show you what's going on here. All right, so this is looking down into the lower pole calyx and it's to the nine o'clock position. There's a small clot right there and you can see the stone coming into view in just a second. And there's a tiny little space right there that is free. It's behind this little clot right there. So there's the stone, and that's the opening. There's the laser that you saw, that blue thing that was just in the view. Now, keep in mind, the working channel of the scope is at the three o'clock position. And here I am trying to figure out, okay, well, there's a little edematous over here, and there's the laser fiber at one o'clock position. How am I going to try to navigate this and try to get into this opening over here. I, I wish I could just bring the fiber maybe a little bit down here so I could access that impact the stone. You can see the edema over on the left side of the screen in just a second. So there's the space that I have. It's very, very tight. There's the laser coming in and out of the view. I'm trying to manipulate the scope from the outside of the patient just so I could reach that there's the fiber again at one o'clock position. Now, this particular scope has the capability to allow me to move this fiber from this one o'clock position to, oh, look at that. It's now at the three o'clock position. Now, so you may be wondering how, because the perspective of the image has not changed. How was I able to get that fiber from one o'clock to three o'clock? Well, that's because this particular ureteroscope made by Vathan, the 8.4 French DISS, direct in-scope suction scope. It has a, a button right here that allows me to suction out of this port over here. This ureteroscope has this rotatable sheath, which allows me to move the ureteroscope, the tip of the ureteroscope, 90 degrees one way or the other. Now, once I'm torqued in the lower pole, angulated with the with the tip of the scope bent, I might not be able to get that full 90 degree deflection. But what I was able to do was to get that slight deflection to, to move the laser fiber from the one o'clock position to the three o'clock position so that I could access the stone using the laser fiber. And let's take a look at what's going on next. So now I have the fiber here at the three o'clock position. I was able to get underneath a stone and use 0 0.4 joules at uh, 40 hertz using a thulium fiber. And I was able to start breaking up that stone from the dependent position. Now you saw that bubble that was there. I was able to use the suction to get rid of the bubble that was down here. And all these bubbles, I'm gently pressing the suction to get rid of the bubbles and also all that dust that tends to obscure the view during ureteroscopy and laser lithotripsy. I'm, I'm just slightly sucking out all that stuff so that I can continue seeing the laser fiber right here and I'm underneath a stone just 
lasering away, lasering away, lasering away. There's a stone. That big thing is that in, that's the stone right there. It's stuck in a in a tiny little calyx. It's completely, nearly completely occupying the calyx. Now I'm lifting up the stone. You can see it right there. And boom, there's the big break that I got right there. So the stone broke up into smaller pieces. And you'll see in a second that it'll start to fragment into even smaller pieces. And I'll be able to continue to break up the stone even more. And eventually, I'll be able to completely uh, break up the stone and evacuate all the stone out of this side calyx of the lower pole. So keep in mind, it looks nice and easy right now, uh, but in actuality, on the outside of the patient, it's not so easy to reach this side calyx of the lower pole. I rotated the laser fiber now back to the one o'clock position using the ureteroscope because I don't need to be in a dependent position anymore. So I'm able to continue to laser the stone and break it up into smaller pieces. A little bit of popcorning effect right there. I like to keep the intrarenal pressure nice and low. Also, I like to keep the output of the laser less than 20 watts because I'm also mindful of the intrarenal temperature as I'm doing this laser lithotripsy. Okay, now, the the stone is is broken up into smaller pieces. And eventually I was able to get down to the lower lower pole and, and just get rid of the stone fragments in the lower pole. And this is what it looks like now. So I'm looking down, flexing down into the lower pole and you'll be able to see there's the lower pole and there's the side calyx to the left here, up there in that little hole. You can see a little bit of edema and this is where that big stone was in this area. It's all gone. It's, it's all gone. All the... The big stone is all gone. You got tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces that are, it, it's, it's insignificant. Talk about clinically insignificant. Those are really clinically insignificant uh, fragments. Again, this is the side calyx of the lower pole. Okay, now you may be wondering what's going on. What happened to all the fragments? This is in renal, this is in renal pelvis right now. This is the nephrostomy tube, and this is some of the fragments that I created from breaking up that lower pole stone. I have currently no, I have nothing in the working channel, which is a 3.6 French working channel. I have nothing in the working channel. Uh, I do have a 10, 12 French renal access sheath up in the right ureter. So I'm really trying to keep the intrarenal temperature down. And during laser lithotripsy, I try to keep it less than 20 watts and not continuously laser the stone allowing time for the irrigation to circulate and cool off that intrarenal temperature. So I tried to keep it under 20 watts. I broke up the stone into tiny little fragments, and this is the resulting fragment collection in the renal pelvis. And the blue thing is the nephrostomy tube that the patient uh, had placed by inter interventional radiology before she came and saw me. So again, remember this picture. This is the dust from the laser lithotripsy. This is the nephrostomy tube. Okay, the working channel, 3.6 French with the ureteroscope is located at the three o'clock position. I moved the ureteroscope near these stone fragments, these, these little debris, the debris field right here, and I pressed the button to suck out all these little pieces right there, all the pieces that are in renal pelvis. You don't have to worry, mm, Will that cause? Will that be a nidus for the patient to develop another stone? Nope. I'm moving the scope near that, and it's like a vacuum cleaner. I'm I'm sucking out all the little fragments that remain in the renal pelvis. That's what I'm doing right there. So moving again, the working channel, 3.6 French working channel, is at the three o'clock position. So I kind of move that near the stone fragments, the dust, if you will, and I'm pressing the suction sucking out all the little pieces. Let me jump ahead a little bit. There we go. Pieces, most of it is gone. And you can see that right there, gone. <laughs> a little bit remain right there. Move it close to it, press the suction, and gone. <laughs> it is so much, it is so satisfying to not only break up the stone, but also remove all that dust all that stuff right there 
you're just sucking it all out with the Vathan 8.4 French single use ureteroscope. And again, if I am being paid to make the video, I will disclose that I am not being paid to make this video. I'm just super satisfied with this ureteroscope. It is the scope that I'm going to grab as my go-to scope whenever possible when performing ureteroscopy because it saves me a lot of time. And also it's very effective. Now keep in mind, if you suck on the the mucosa of the uh, kidney, you can cause a little bit of edema. So always be mindful, be very gentle with the suction because with great power comes great uh, responsibility. There's a collection right there, gone, sucked <laughs> out of the kidney. So anyway, you get the gist. Not only can you access the lower pole, you can rotate the entire length of the scope here move the fiber to a location where you can get to the stone, start breaking it up, freeing up the stone, freeing up the calyx, and then you can evacuate the fragments using this button right here with this ureteroscope connected to suction. Now, you may be, your surgery center may be saying, oh, this is too expensive, it's ex et cetera. There is, until the end of 2025, there is a TPT, transitional pass-through code, that your surgery center and the hospital can use mitigating the cost of the ureteroscope. I don't know how much it costs, but it's it's a pass-through charge, so your surgery center and your hospital are not eating the cost of the ureteroscope. I would recommend that you highly consider using this. Try it. Make sure you understand how to use it. Make sure you take advantage of the suction port. You don't have to press it all the way down. You just gently touch it, and it does a great job. Connect this to 400 millimeters of mercury of suction right here, and then use this button liberally and gently. Again, with great power comes with, comes great responsibility. And don't forget to rotate this. If you get into a pickle and get into a tough spot, you can move the tip, the entire sheath right here, 90 degrees one way or the other. And it'll, it'll allow you to move the working channel and move your stone extractor move your laser fiber to a location where you can actually treat the stone, making your life a lot easier, making this expensive hobby of doing surgeries in the operating room much more tolerable. Now, I can't just praise the scope without saying a couple of bad things. Number one, one bad thing. Although this is great, this setup with the adjustable biopsy port, I love it. However, Whenever I use a 360 micron thulium fiber and I try to introduce it through this working channel, it gets caught. It gets caught temporarily in this bend. I do have to rotate it somehow, finagle this, the, the fiber to get it through this bend until I can get it into the working channel throughout the distal end of the scope. So that is one hassle. Now, also, if you're someone like me who likes to take videos and capture images of your surgeries, the processor, the user interface of the Vathan processor needs work. In order to transfer information from the folders to a USB thumb drive, it's a big hassle. So the UI, the user interface of the Vathan processor needs work. And if Vathan, if you're watching, if you need help, let me know. I'd be happy to share what I know and my experience with the processor. As always, I thank you so much for the privilege of your time, and I welcome any comments you have. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye-bye.